welcome to the first episode of the Nine Minute PD, because 10 minutes is just too long. I'm Jordan, and this is Jen, and today we are going to be digging into the Telpa Speaking Type 1, giving you all the tips and tricks to help you and your students be successful this year. With that said, I'm going to turn it over to Jen. Okay, so on Telpa's Listening and Speaking, every single time you're going to see a video type question, and that is what Type 1 is, is videos. What's really cool about these is that the videos are broken into segments. Jordan, I want to start off. What do you what do you notice or wonder about this first page? Well, I notice that there is a video that okay. I'll probably I probably should watch, but <laughs> I'm wondering why there's no question. And at the top, I see it goes six, and then there's another thing, and it skips to seven. Absolutely. And, yeah. No, I was so glad you said that. That was what I was hoping. This is a huge part, and I know. Back when I was teaching Telpas, I'd have teachers go, Miss Wilson, where's, I don't have a question. Mine's, I don't have to answer it, right? No, okay. No, kid, no. <laughs> okay. What this is, is what's cool about the listening and speaking is they're kind of intertwined. It will play the full video at the beginning. What you need to train your kids to do, and this is very important, even though there's no question right here, train your kids to listen to the entire video. Because I've had kids go, oh, there's no question. I'm not listening to this. Like, don't waste my time. But this is where all of the information is combined together to kind of create the story that they're going to want you to respond to. So it's perfect right now that they need to listen to the whole story together. What's cool about it after they, you'll notice as they start going through the questions, it's going to be segmented into directly answering the question. So one video could have listening and, or not could, it will have listening and speaking questions. You're gonna be doing both. It segments it, it really shows on what they need to focus on. Perfect. And you'll That's see, it'll go through, it'll take you more listening questions. But today we said we are going to show you a speaking question. So let me take you over here, but this is still on the same video. Had we shown you the full four minute video, you would have seen this segment in it. It's just like it kind of like cropped out your favorite part or your DVR, you're able to fast forward to it. So to get started on this, I want to actually play the video now because we didn't listen to the full thing for time's sake because we want to save your time. But on Telpas, the kids will have the opportunity to press play and listen to the directions. Read the directions. When you are ready to speak, tell as much as you can. You may watch the video again before you speak. The directions in Telboss will tell them they can watch the video again. Train your kids to do it again. No matter what, watch that video. There's no time limit on the amount of times they can watch the video. So now let's play the question and see what we're going to be answering. How does a cuttlefish disguise or hide itself? So Jordan, with that question in mind, I'm going to play this. I believe it's about 40 second video clip. And we're just going to see if we can answer this question. All right. So your question again, you can repeat the question. How does a cuttlefish disguise or hide itself? Okay, so with that in mind, and we just watched the video clip, I'm going to show you real fast what not to do, but this is what your kids are probably going to do if they have not been trained on how to respond. So remember, this is what we don't want our kids doing. But Jordan, I'm gonna hit the record button because I'm, I know you're so excited to answer this question. I, so I, know, the answer. I, I know the answer. answer. I need to do it right away. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hit record and Jordan is going to answer the question. A cuttlefish can change the color or texture of its skin. Okay. So if you'll notice, Jordan is done responding, but her timer is still going. She still has tons of time left, but I'm going to go ahead and stop right here. How much time do I have to answer? For these video questions, the student has 90 seconds, which may sound really fast, but it's really, you get a lot more time to add those details. So it's really important to train the kiddos how to add those details. Okay, so can you teach me how to add those details and make my response even better? Yes, absolutely I can. I'm so glad you asked. So let me bring you over here, this really cool resource that we have here at Summit K-12. I'm super excited. This will be downloadable for you. You can take this, implement it in your classroom today if you're ready to go. So, but first we wanna show you how to use it. This is, you can't use graphic organizers on the day of the test. You cannot. That's why this is a training you have to do this beforehand, start putting these, and you can do it whole group, you can do it centers, however you want to implement in your classroom, you've got to train the kiddos beforehand, but that's just like any other test they take. Yes, ma'am. Can I write on a separate sheet of paper during the test, like a blank yes. sheet of paper? Okay. Absolutely. So the kids can take that notebook paper, whatever they've learned, they can script out everything they want to say. So okay. yeah, but they just can't take the graphic organizer. So that's where that training piece comes into play. 
So I can almost start to memorize these steps and then replicate mm -hmm. that on the day of, even though I don't actually have this in front of me. Mm -hmm. Okay. We can, you'll notice here that there are nine different steps and we'll encourage the kids to remember and go through. And Jordan, I'm going to take Jordan through a little bit of a simulation of how maybe I would lead a whole group in my class or with a student, something that you can take into your classroom. So we're going to start right here looking at step one, use the question to write the first sentence. So Jordan, I'm going to come back over here and our question was, how does a cuttlefish disguise or hide itself? Okay. So I should repeat that question in my answer. Is that what the yes. for? Okay. So I could say a cuttlefish disguises itself with its unique skin. Awesome. Jordan took the sentence and said a cuttlefish disguises itself with its, with its unique skin. So this is my favorite part. If you can train your students, even especially your beginners, to restate what was in the question, that's amazing. Yes, please. If I have a brand new newcomer who's going to be able to use disguises and cuttlefish, um, that score is huge. And so they may not be able to extend the rest of that or expand on the rest of that sentence, but that verbiage and that academic language is already there for them. Train them to listen and train them to use it. And then the next step, what we encourage to do is to restate your main idea, just so we're making sure we're staying on topic. So, okay. Could you go back to the question really quick? Yes, I love that you asked that because okay. you can play it as many times a as you want to. cuttlefish is a master of disguise with its unique skin. Okay. Just like it's real. So I'm also noticing that in my first sentence, I was kind of talking about what it does, but the question asks how. So yeah. maybe here I am going to discuss how a cuttlefish uses its skin to hide. Absolutely. You're restating it. You're coming back in. That is so important. I love that you brought that up. It doesn't say what does a cuttlefish. It says how it wants those details. So step three, one of the best things you can teach, train your kiddos to do is go through and it's almost like a vocabulary walk. Replay the video and write down any vocabulary word that really sticks out. Any of that academic language that they think that they could use in their sentences later. So for time's sake, we went ahead and wrote all of them down so you don't have to listen to Jordan pull all the vocabulary. And we can see we pulled words, camouflage, texture, bumpy, smooth. So now going into it, Jordan can expand on her sentences. Okay, so when I'm writing my sentences, I should really focus on getting these details, ac these academic words into my sentences. That is that very important? Yes, that is one of the things Telpos is looking for. I know you've probably heard me say academic language, academic vocabulary about 20,000 times already. But that is one of the biggest things that Telpos, the scoring, is looking for. Okay, so I'm going to next put these into sentences. Yes, so next step four, we're going to go into sentences and expand more and give those more details because you do have the 90 seconds. Okay. So okay. one thing I like to train students to hear, and I want to give you guys a quick example. We won't do all of the sentences, but I train the students to look for those natural pauses in the recording, and you can chunk it. It's just an easy thing for, you know, your intermediate students who aren't ready to take on the full video to listen for those natural pauses and write their sentences based off those. Those are more of your coaching tips. So those are the things you wanna train your kiddos to start coaching themselves through as well. You do it whole group, the kids will hopefully take it on the day of the test and remember, hey, my teacher said to put in transition words. Then they're gonna start getting those into their tell pause answers. I was gonna say, since I already had my recording done, what can I do if I'm a student taking the test and I can't record and listen to myself again? Am I allowed to write it out? Yes. So you hopefully will have already written it out before. Absolutely. Just keep practicing many times in your head as many times as you need to keep saying it. Keep editing yourself. Keep saying it over and over again. As long as you remember, you can't record again. And that could look like you can keep asking for more paper the day of the test. Keep asking your teacher, can, you know, kids train your kids like never. You always want a blank piece of paper in front of you so you can keep adding. You can keep adding as many pieces of paper as you want. You just can't have that graphic organizer. I want to show you what an exemplar recording would look like, what the goal is for your students. What should my students be able to do day of Telbus? They're in here recording. If I'm actively monitoring around my room, the little things you might notice as you're walking. This is what I would hope to notice when I walk behind Jordan. A cuttlefish disguises itself with its unique skin. And you can listen to yourself as many times as you need to. Okay, awesome. And that would be, that is the type one question. It's pretty simple. It's just all about organizing your thinking and training your kids beforehand how to respond to these questions and the little steps like listening to the chunked videos that they may not have thought of before. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the nine minute PD and it made your life just a little bit easier. Join us next week and we'll dig into more awesome strategies.